If you're an individual who's ever considered purchasing trading signals, then you may have asked yourself the question or the provider the question, if your strategy delivers consistent risk-adjusted returns, then why are you selling trading signals? Why sell trading signals to begin with? Do the risks of selling trading signals, particularly if you're unregulated or don't have the appropriate asset management permission to do so, do those risks really justify the rewards? In this video presentation, we're going to talk about the drivers behind the trading signals industry, some of the key problems that you need to watch out for, and alternatives that should be the logical preference for both the supply and the demand side that fuels this industry at the moment, that supply side being traders selling signals, demand side being potential investors looking to deploy capital to the market using somebody else's intellectual property, aka signals. In terms of what actually drives the trading signal industry, for one, the exciting prospect of generating gains, for instance, from the capital markets is one that many of us have experienced at one point or another. But contrary to popular opinion, it is anything but easy, particularly if you're a retail trader or investor. So let's take a look at the drivers in terms of, uh, from the perspective of a retail trader, somebody looking to um, go about selling their intellectual property, their entries and exits as trading signals. So if you're a retail trader, odds are that you're undercapitalized and possibly in need of additional returns or income to make the whole process of trading worthwhile, especially if you have a great trading strategy that delivers consistent risk-adjusted returns. This is one of the greatest pain points for a trader where they don't have sufficient capital to really make meaningful returns out of what is something that they have struck upon or something that they have worked really hard towards building, a robust trading strategy that can grow capital consistently in risk-adjusted fashion. So the bane of this person's existence is that they don't have the necessary capital to make a meaningful return out of it, but they can go about generating returns. So naturally, this person, given the existence of the trading signals industry, will look to sell their entries and exits as signals. And in theory, this may help work towards that goal. But in practice, as we'll see shortly, this doesn't really work out so well in practice. From the demand side, if you're someone who doesn't have the know-how, the skills or the expertise to go about deploying your capital directly to the markets, basically you may be open to someone more qualified managing that capital for you. The issue with taking your capital to hedge funds, for instance, or other investment uh, vehicles is that they won't give you the time of day if you show up with anything less than high six or seven figures in most cases, which isn't the case with a majority of retail investors, particularly those who find themselves attracted to the trading signals industry. All of this that we just discussed yields conditions that are ripe for the trading signals industry's continued existence. It solves a few problems on the surface of things, but as we'll dig into shortly, those problems aren't exactly solved. They lead to further problems. And uh, there are alternatives, legal and more logical alternatives for both parties, traders and investors. So on the surface of things, both the supply and demand side, that is from the trader's perspective, generating an additional stream of income to potentially fund the trading account being operated on by the strategy uh, in exchange for selling their intellectual property as signals to the investing third party. And from the investor's perspective, the demand side, reduced capital barrier to entry so that the investor with limited capital that would otherwise not be appropriate in an institutional setting, that person now has the ability to take somebody's intellectual property on and manage their capital with it. Both of these people are taking on risks uh, from the trader's perspective, that of regulatory risk as well as uh, intellectual property loss. And from the investor side, potentially risk management risk, among other risks to do with deploying capital to unregulated entities. So let's dig a bit deeper into the trader's perspective. Say your trading strategy delivers consistent risk adjusted returns. Then what would prompt you to sell trading signals? There are a few different types of individuals who could go about doing this. The well-intentioned trader may consider doing so as a means to, as we discussed earlier, generate additional income or fund existing trading capital at the cost of parting with their intellectual property. The risk of their strategy eventually being reverse engineered by the very clients they're selling it to, while that risk is very real, isn't really an initial stumbling block for some traders. And neither is falling foul of asset management regulation. The availability of, for instance, PAM and MAM account platforms domiciled in mostly questionable jurisdictions facilitates this uh, further. 
So let's dig a little deeper into the incentives that may drive a trader to sell trading signals, what, what the thought process could be with an example. So let's say a trader invests in the Forex market with a strategy that yields 20% on average per annum with a maximum drawdown of 10%. The trader's progression with a 20% annual return and a starting capital of let's say 10,000 US dollars is therefore at the beginning you have $10,000 the end of year one, if you maintain your consistency at 20% year on year, you have 12,000 in year one, 14,400 in year two, and 17,280 in year three. That's the progression of your initial capital. Indeed, at 20% year on year, this is very impressive. But in dollar terms, the trader is only making $2,000 in the first year, 2,400 in the second, and 2,880 in the third, and this progression is constantly declining, even though the earnings are growing at 20% year on year. So in reality, the problem isn't that the trading returns percentage wise are too low. 20% annually is really, really good. The problem lies in the limited starting capital. And this is the bane of practically every retail trader's existence limitation in terms of starting capital. In this person's case, it's 10,000 US dollars. So the moral of this scenario, this story is that if you trade peanuts, you will only ever make peanuts. And in theory, selling trading signals could improve the trader's payout, the subscription fees contributing to overall returns from trading activity or towards increasing existing trading capital, as we talked about. But what is the cost of this to the trader? At what cost is the trader considering selling trading signals? Is the trader really making sufficiently more income from this activity to justify taking on the tremendous risk in, for, in, in the form of regulatory non-compliance and potential performance fees left on the table should the trader have been attracting third-party investor capital in a legal way? So before we delve into performance fees and the alternative of attracting third-party capital, let's go through some of the alternatives that this trader has to trading signals. Could he borrow money to lever his payout from 20%? Could he take on leverage? So let's say this trader now takes on five to one leverage. Now with his initial $10,000 starting capital, he'd be investing $50,000 at five to one leverage. If he makes 20% return on this, he'll earn $10,000 or 100% of his initial capital. This seemingly very attractive. All of this sounds really good, right? But what about the drawdown? Well, if he gets off to a bad start and has a drawdown of 10%, he'll be substantially underwater having lost 5,000 or 50% of his own real capital. This is where leverage will not be working in his favor. So now let's say instead of five to one, the trader goes for 20 to one leverage. Now with his starting capital of 10,000 US dollars, he'd be investing 200,000 US dollars. On the nicer th side of things, with this leveraged capital, if he makes 20%, then he'll be earning 40,000 US dollars or 400% of his initial real capital. All of this still sounds really, really good. Let's consider the drawdown again. Should at any point, particularly at the wrong time, a drawdown of 10%, which is his historical max surface, he will lose roughly $20,000. But he only had $10,000 in real capital to start with. So what we have here is another example of yet another blown account in the industry due to use of excess leverage. Now, if the trader was also selling signals at such time, the service would effectively have ground to a halt, leaving any subscribers of his service with irrecoverable losses and no future service from this provider because the provider's blown their account. So in summary, by increasing leverage as an alternative to just selling signals for that additional stream of income or additional return on activity, the payout function becomes either massive upside where you're multiplying your capital by huge factors or complete and utter loss of capital and more importantly, credibility if you've also been running a signal service at that point in time. And individually, of course, when somebody looks at your track record, they will not trust your ability to manage capital if you have this sort of performance on file. 
Furthermore, during this whole process, let's imagine the trader hasn't blown up yet or anything bad hasn't happened. The trader is still isn't some sort of risk neutral robot. Loss aversion is a very real cognitive bias that affects traders. And it is indeed loss aversion that may well negatively impact his track record a lot faster than that excess leverage swan event ever could or before it got around to ruining the trader's track record for him. So is employing leverage is selling signals, are, are these means of amplifying trading return in the presence of limited starting capital, are they really worth it? And is there really no better payout than the trade peanuts make peanuts scenario? Here's where we go into incentives. And in order for us to shed light on the alternatives that benefit both the trader, the person supplying the trading signals industry, and the investor, the person looking to benefit from third party intellectual property, deploying their own capital via signals, that we need to bring the investor into this picture. Now let's imagine an investor that has 10 million US dollars sitting in their bank account, earning a consistent, well, with the rates these days, 0% per year. So that sarcasm there is fully intended. So somehow let's say the trader and this investor they hit upon some mutual win-win opportunity after meeting somehow. This trader now, who had the previous two options of excess leverage or selling trading signals, this trader has intellectual property that can still generate 20% a year. This investor that this trader's now met has 10 million US dollars that are completely unlevered and they're sitting idle in a bank earning nothing. The trader's strategy could lever this investor's 10 million dollars and if that were to be the case, the trader would generate $2 million in surplus profits every year for this investor. For this to happen, both the trader and the investor need, well, each other, and an acceptable payout function, not trading signals where there isn't management of risk, there isn't regulatory oversight, there isn't legality in the picture. They need a mutually acceptable payout function where they both benefit. However, before we delve into this, let's examine how the trader's life has changed uh, for the better without employing excess leverage and without selling his intellectual property as trading signals, because it's important to reflect on why this changes the trader's game. In terms of capital asymmetry, the investor changed the trader's game because with a 20% return, the trader's payout now becomes $2,000 in profit on the trader's own capital. Remember that the trader had a starting capital of $10,000 plus and only plus whatever the investor agreed to pay him from his or her profits. It's only this positive that is asymmetric plus this additional income from what the investor has agreed to pay out of profits that makes all the difference in the trader's life. The investor is the trader's asymmetric opportunity to generate extra payout without downside risk. And think about it like this. If the coin comes up heads, the trader extends his payout through performance fees from the investor's profits. The investor makes X, the trader charges a percentage of X. If it comes up tails, he only loses his own money. The investor loses money too, but the trader is not impacted by the investor's loss. Now let's compare this to the previous situation where the tra trader was levered 20 to 1 and had a maximum drawdown of 10%. The 20 to 1 leverage with a drawdown of 10% would have blown the trader up. However, the trader levering the investor's capital with a drawdown of 10%, by doing this, he'd only lose $1,000 of his own money if the max drawdown were to surface and he had initial starting capital of 10,000. In terms of manager and investor alignment, this brings us to the contract between the trader and the investor. How should the trader structure the capital asymmetry he offers this investor and all future investors? Should he be selling it this investor trading signals? Would he be able to generate such a payout by selling entries and exits to the investor? What prevents the investor from reverse engineering the trader's uh, logic and getting rid of the trader, not paying for subscription fees anymore and just doing it by themselves? Should the trader package his or her strategy into some sort of automated trading robot, a uh, meta trader expert advisor, or some other form of trading algorithm? Should this trader operate a MAM account and run into regulatory issues? Should this trader operate a PAM account also running into regulatory issues? Should this trader start his own hedge fund running into capital limitations and regulatory issues? 
certainly all of these are considerations that he has to take into account. After all, um, he might fall foul of asset management regulation if he picks the wrong approach. He could be operating PAM or MAM accounts, which is also illegal but without appropriate regulation. He could look to starting a hedge fund, which is very, very expensive and requires regulation. He may have to take out a lot of risk to legally manage investor money as a result of all of this. He might undervalue himself in a rush to pick the shortcut and churn dumb investors by selling trading signals for a while, adding to the capital base or making some additional income and then disappearing. Or he could simply list a Darwin asset at DarwinX. Now, unlike trading signal services, a Darwin, which is a dynamic asset and risk-weighted investment, brings a meritocratic league of alternative data accessible to all stakeholders under one roof, traders and investors alike. Let's dig into this in a bit more detail to explain how this is one of the few legal, logical, sensible alternatives for both the trader and the investor to consider. Firstly, a Darwin that the trader will create by listing their trading strategy on DarwinX is directly tradable as an asset class. So the trader lists their trading strategy as a directly investable asset on the Darwin exchange. Investors can then take this trader's alpha directly to market by buying his asset, swapping the cost of acquisition and process for fair compensation to the trader instead. Investor makes profits, pays trader a percentage of said profits. The compensation, unlike in trading signals, is commensurate to the investor capital that is deployed to the market. It's no longer a case of flat fees as would have been the case with selling trading signals. So you're suddenly, by attracting investor capital to talent, you are greatly amplifying your potential returns over time with no downside risk directly to yourself. In the scenario of investors investing in the traders Darwin, they would be replicating the traders signal in real time instead of waiting for a signal to arrive and then deploying the signal to their accounts or having latency between some sort of automated distribution services, deploying those signals to their accounts through some sort of limited power of attorney or what have you as exists in the industry at this point in time. And traders would then charge a performance fee on any investor profits for providing the service. Investors are informed of a trading strategy's capacity in advance, the capacity being how much capital can this strategy actually take to market before it starts suffering. And traders, consequently, also have complete control over capacity management in case their strategy gets overcapitalized and it leads to a reduction in performance or a complete reversal in performance, uh, as sometimes may be the case, they can limit entry of investors or entry of any further capital until that matter is resolved. Darwins are accessible to all stakeholders, retail and institutional. There's no capital asymmetry. All investors have equal access to a trader's strategies, these being listed at Dar as Darwins on the Darwin Exchange. And everyone competes fairly for a share of the available capacity. There's no information asymmetry anymore. All investors have equal non-preferential access to the Darwin Asset Universe. There's absolutely no way to disseminate the information, the intellectual property of the trader, outside the ecosystem without fairly compensating the trader. Protection of intellectual property. Containment within the Darwin X ecosystem and regulatory cover for the trader to legally charge a performance fee on investor profits ensures that the trader gets adequately compensated for providing signals in the first place and simultaneously protects the trader's intellectual property, the trading signals, from being reverse engineered, copied, or used in any other way by the investor. So hopefully in this presentation, we made a case for the legal, more sensible alternative to selling trading signals from a trader's perspective, and from the investor's perspective, where you only pay for performance and are insulated in any dramatic variability in the risk taken on by a trader by investing in the trader's Darwin instead that has a fixed value at risk target and insulates you from the trader varying that risk on the underlying account powering the Darwin. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.